it's dude. I, I I've been doing this segment on the Monday morning podcast called uh, Comment of the Week. Yeah. I've just my only way to like just as far as I just started it, Andrew. Andrew just looks like what the fuck is that? Um, this person was writing because they showed this this older guy with like a ponytail, and he was in this some some pharmacy or shit. And he just wouldn't wear a mask, you know. Looked like you know like shredded wheat, no conditioner in his hair. And he was sitting there going, this is like what the Nazis did. And blah, blah, blah. So anyways, one of the things in like the comment, this guy who was like pro not wearing a mask, he goes, the only thing you got to do to know what the government's doing right now is watch V for Vendetta. <laughs> <laughs> is that all I got to do? <laughs> I thought I had to be in the CIA or be in one of those fucking Bilderberg meetings to really know what was going on. Evidently, Bert, all you have to do He's watch a Hollywood movie called V for Vendetta, and they spelled the whole thing out. Oh, fuck. Yeah. What was that stupid fucking book that everybody flipped out about, the religious book that took on the – and they made a movie about it. It was this big book about uh, like the Catholic Church. Oh, Andrew, help me out here. It came out like 15, 20 years ago. The secret? They made a – the movie bombed. It was, I don't, what the fuck was it called? It was all about the Catholic Church and there was these assassins and they were going around trying to silence people and running the world and all of that shit. Problem solved this for me, okay, Bill? Oh, go ahead. Did you come up with it, Andrew? Was it said the sequel to The Da Vinci Code was doing that? Oh, it's The Da Vinci Code. Oh, The Da Vinci Code. Yes. I saw that. Yeah. I read it too. So I just love that people read that book and be like, yeah, this is what's really going on. It's like That's what happened. That Mel Gibson's father is one of those guys. Yeah. Okay. I used, I, dude, I, I did that for like five years. Five years of my podcast, I was that guy. And then it just, I don't know, one day I just sort of woke up going like, the amount of people that would have to shut the fuck up for this to work. The, and if this, if this person's really laying out what's going on, they wouldn't allow this book to be published. And this guy would get whacked. So I kind of realized that if you're actually affecting change, if you're truly affecting change uh, in a way that these people that are running everything don't want it to be, you will know because they will, they, they will be an attempt on your life. I, man, th- I'm, I'm, I'm or maybe gonna... now they can just destroy your character, you know, throw a couple me too cases at your way or something like that. But like, like the sixties, I thought that the whole message of the 60s was if you rock the boat black white male female a crazed lone gunman is going to come in and take care of you that's that's what i got out of watching you know civil right leaders to the kennedys to musicians all of those guys like fucking odian and shit it was very convenient how everybody in the counterculture just really like the big fucking tent poles of that all just got whacked. And then we came out of it. It's like, you know, and it's all easy listening, standing on a corner in Winslow, Arizona. And there's all of that the shit. Yeah. Staying alive. Staying alive. <laughs> yeah. It just became, Hey, you know what? I think I'm going to write a song about nothing. How about that? So I don't accidentally overdose or get fucking in the light of the morning sun. <laughs> I'm gonna need you the morning's gone. I uh I got pissed. I got pissed. Uh I can't stop talking about this to my wife and she does not give a fuck. Um I have been I've been you know, I've been trying to lose weight and get healthy. And like I look at guys like Kumail who look fucking awesome, and I kind of go like if, not not I know that this is crazy, but I go if Kumail can do it, I can do it. And then he started getting dragged on fucking Twitter. By the same, I don't even know what type of person they're like. He's bought. I I got fucking. It sent me through the goddamn roof, and then I I, I want to tweet something, and then I'm like, I don't want to pile on. I don't want Kamel to misread what, it. What are they What are they giving him shit for? Who fucking? Because he's because now he's yoked and he looks fucking awesome, and and I I'm I'm guessing. Oh, that's that, like if you leave your hometown and you go out and go do something. There's gonna be a couple of people. Hey, don't forget where you came from. They get like, uh, I guess he was the Silicon Valley kind of nebbish guy, and now he looks like a fucking, fucking 
uh, he looks fucking awesome, dude. He's like Jack Ryan. He looks awesome, man. <laughs> his fucking jaw is yoked. His arms. He has. He does these pictures with cake. I look at him, and all I can see is his arms, and go, God, man, I want, I want whatever the fuck, like, is inspiring him to be there. Like, because he wasn't always that guy. That? He uh, he that. landed a part in a Marvel movie called The Eternals. Uh, so he got in shape for that for the movie. So. And I'll tell you what, let me tell you about, this is when, this is what pisses me off about it, okay? This is what pisses me off. I don't want to tweet this because it's not going to come out right, but I think I can say it and it'll come out right. Is you want to talk about representation. People always want to talk about representation. Well, then let Kumail be fucking jacked so that some Indian kid does, doesn't see every Indian stereotype and every fucking movie about superheroes the indian guys the guy on the computer going try it now like like we're, we're, that's your line bill from your stand-up but you know like oh, with yeah, the yeah, yeah. with the on the on the computer going we've got him you know four minutes till i break the code let one time the fucking indian guy look like fucking like thor and so that that's represent that's what i believe representation is is like and then don't give him shit about it because he looks like fucking chris pratt chris pratt looks fucking awesome no one gives him shit about it I, I, think the thing everybody is, gets, I think if you were a fatty and then you get in shape, this fat people say you sold out. Oh, I'll, t I'll take that. I'll take that in a heartbeat. I'll get ripped. I'll do steroids. I'll do fucking I will tell you this, dude. Steroids. If you get fucking jacked. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Your word is your wand. When you get jacked. When I get, st I love this. When you get jacked. Yeah. Here's my question. Will your fans still love you if you go on stage shirtless? And you no longer look like their buddy at a cookout. There's you now look like the guy who's going to kick over their fucking hibachi. <laughs> oh, that's that's what it is, Bill. Is it is that's what you're? That's what it is. It's I bet it's his own fans going like, oh, you don't look like you go to a comic book store now because now he just looks like he's the guy standing out bouncing at the comic book at the club. Right, right. That's fucking ridiculous. You should let him change and be whatever fucking person you, he wants to Most be. Most people do, dude. Most people do, and they, they just focus on, like, the negative shit. So. He, and and then here's uh. what bothers me. He's the sweetest fucking dude you'll ever run into. He is the nicest guy, doesn't talk shit, doesn't. He's a fucking great fucking guy. It's funny guy. if he became a dick now that he has muscles. And then they great if he just He's like the study. No, he's, what it is is you get too much testosterone, you start being a dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was like fuck Bert that fat fuck I'll fuck him up and you're like wait come out whatever happened to the nice guy he's dead Bert I fucking I bench press that motherfucker yeah right. hey I'll, how long how long are we doing on this one we should we should wrap it up we're pretty good no we wrap it up I wasn't sure if we would be doing two hour ones I know there was talk about that so we could do like meet twice a month Oh wow! Yeah, well, I'll, I'll cut this part out. But yeah, we're um next week, <laughs> ne next week we'll do uh like I said we'll do we'll do like forty five to fifty minutes of a regular episode, and then we'll just have the guests come on for the second half. So. Oh, that's that's how we were gonna do it. Okay, I get, it. Great. I get it. Break it up. Um. All right. Well, good for Kamal getting in shape. Good for yeah, him. Yeah, he looks awesome, man. I can't wait to see the Eternals. I support and, him. And, and and congrats to uh. John Favreau sounds like he's doing really good with the fucking Mandalorian. <laughs> Can't wait Congrats to watch to Cory Booker. He seems to be doing pretty good with that politics uh, stuff. Cory Booker, Japanese people. <laughs> <laughs> we touched all the bases on this we one. We touched bro. it all, man. We, we almost went around the world on that one. Um, <laughs> all right, everybody. This has been another wonderful episode of The Bill. Bert. Pod. Cast. We'll see you next time. Happy New Year. <laughs>